Mike here, uh, waiting on a uh, epoxy cure till I can actually fire this thing up, but I thought I would do a little video kind of explaining where I am. Uh, where I am. So in a lot of the previous videos, I was doing some ejector work uh, with this ejector that I built, um, various different primary motive nozzles. Um, but most recently, I built this goofy little separator tank the refrigeration system. This thing uh, will be separating uh, liquid and vapor propane. Um, used very similar construction techniques that I've done in the recent past here. I have a lot of one inch copper pipe, hard drawn copper pipe, so I kneel it at the ends uh, and pinch it in the vise whenever I want to do uh, connections like that. I don't have to use caps. It's actually fewer brazing joints. Um, eh, I don't know. I like it. Works out pretty well. Uh, the bottom one here is a little more complicated. There's three. Um, two of them are pinched because the circumference of the copper limits made it two three-eighths lines and then there's a hole drilled in the back side there, kind of in the butt crack uh, for the third one. Uh, overall, it's a uh, one-inch copper uh, pipe. Uh, there'll be liquid propane up to about this level right here. Uh, we have three lines coming in the bottom. One of them uh, is the refrigerant from the refrigerant control from the medium pressure column, so it's feeding mostly liquid in. Um, oh, the back one there actually drains liquid into an evaporator coil, and uh, liquid vapor can overflow back into the tank and be separated. Uh, we have a pressure gauge for the low pressure here, a thermocouple on the back that'll take the liquid temperature, uh, suction line that draws back to the ejector assembly. Um, and this goofy coil here, well, I'm not going to go into too, in too much depth because I don't know if it's going to work, uh, but it's intended to be a superheat um, super control for the uh, TXV. So if I install a TXV in this thing, I need some superheat to uh, get it to open and close. So that's why the base of it's actually here at about where the liquid level is going to be maintained. So if there's a little bit of liquid in there, say too much, It'll um, and there's a sensing bulb on here. It'll cool down, cause the the uh, TXV to close, um, and then if it closes too much and starts to warm up because there's not enough liquid in there, it'll open the TXV back up and hopefully regulate the liquid level in there. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but uh, thought I'd give it a shot. The racetrack coil that I made, kind of a pain in the ass to to produce. It's not exactly perfect, but you know, good enough, good enough, better than it has to be. Uh, and then of course we have these sight plugs here. These sight plugs are stainless steel. Uh, glass, I think they're good for like 750 PSI or something, one inch pipe thread. Um, you can see there's a whole mass of epoxy on there because I'm screwed up. Uh, cranked them in there with some um, pipe dope and did a pressure test and they leaked a little bit. So, leaked too much for my purposes. So I drizzled a little bit of epoxy. This back one here wasn't too bad. Um, 24 hours later I pressure tested again and this one was actually good. These two were not a uh, vast improvement. I almost just installed it as is, but then I decided to go ahead and make kind of a, a tape uh, cone around both of these and had it laying up so the glass was facing up uh, and drizzled some epoxy in there to kind of cast it. It's really ugly. It's, it was really half-assed considering the amount of work that went into the whole thing, um, but I'll cover up most of it with insulation anyway, so I'll, as long as I can't see it. I'm happy. Um, overall, the, the whole thing came out pretty well. Pretty happy with it. Um, so uh, right now I'm just waiting till this evening to uh, try to get a full 24-hour cure on it before I do a pressure test. But in the meantime, I uh, went ahead and ran some lines from the existing system. Uh, a few of the lines had to be a little goofy because um, you know it was never in the original idea. None of this was in the original idea. It just keeps evolving over time. But uh, one of them being to draw off liquid off of the medium pressure separator. I had to make a line that connects. I uh, had to modify the evaporator so that liquid is drawn off from the bottom of the uh, liquid separator. Uh, I had to modify the uh, inlet a little bit, the high pressure inlet for the uh, ejector. Uh, I had to make kind of this goofy... Well, it's getting hard to demonstrate some of this stuff. Uh, this is actually suction back to the compressor. I had to make this goofy thing couple of 90s out of 45 there going back uh, broke my uh, suction line thermocouple but fortunately I had this from the uh, last set of experiments uh, has this 90 degree that was a pressure gauge I just 
plugged it up. So that'll be my suction line uh, temperature temperature reading there. Um, three eighths needle valve. That's my metering device, and uh, that's essentially where I'm at. So I pulled a small vacuum on it, and it's it's not holding very well at all. It's not really holding at all. Um, I only get down to about 20 inches of mercury. So uh, probably not until I get to do a sort of a pressure test that I'll figure out where that leak is. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of brass in this thing. A lot of flare fittings. A lot of them have been unscrewed, um, retightened, unscrewed, retightened several times. So they do wear out. Uh, but nonetheless, they're just inherently uh, leaky. Um, I don't need nearly this many, but it, it keeps it adaptable because it is constantly changing and evolving over time. Um, I don't have to do so much brazing, purging, things like that. Uh, so, uh, you know, a few leaks, just like the leaks with these light plugs. Minor leaks, if I can't really hear them, um, I, you know, I don't feel that they're really going to affect the outcome too greatly, and propane is cheap, so it's not like I'm using up some, you know, $50 a pound refrigerant or something. Uh, so, anyway, I'll uh, cut her off here and in the next video, I'll try to explain how the whole thing works top to bottom. Thanks for watching.